It's an honor and delight here to be here with Professor Jonathan Crane, who teaches at Emory University um, and in the field of bioethics and Jewish thought. Thanks for taking time to talk. Pleasure. So m many people, in fact, probably most people, deal with the tension of talking with people in their final days, hours, their dying state. And one of the tensions there is how pastorally to comfort, to, um, to help someone transition from this world. But then there's also this ethical question about truth in those final moments. What would you say some of the Jewish perspectives are on whether or not we should or must tell the truth to someone who is dying? Well, let's give that a concrete example. Let's come, come up with a case. Uh, and let's call this patient Nancy. Okay. So Nancy, uh, let's say, um, was dying in the early 1990s. Uh, and it was unclear precisely why. Um, she shows up at the hospital and uh, the doctors say that she is dying from... Uh, they don't really know really why in the early 1990s, but they figure out that uh, she's ultimately dying from uh, a recurrence of the cancer that she had had a couple of decades before. In the workup, uh, the doctors realize that indeed she's not dying from a recurrence of the cancer that she had had decades before, but she is now dying from HIV and AIDS. Mm -hmm. Because in the early days, the uh, late 80s and early 90s, they didn't know how to screen or screen very well or thoroughly the blood transfusions. And it turns out that she got a bad blood transfusion. So she's been given a prognosis that she has a one week to live. And she is now thinking to herself, I'm dying from cancer, which I thought that I had mm -hmm. uh, beaten. Um, but the doctors now have this new information that I'm now dying from, that she is now dying from something else, completely unrelated to her cancer. The question here in this circumstance is, should she be told precisely why she is dying uh, from a, a re recurrence of her cancer or for a completely unrelated means? So Jewish bioethicists, when encountering this kind of circumstance, wrestle with a couple of different uh, principles. One principle is the notion of emet, of truth-telling. There is a strong principle uh, found within the Jewish textual tradition about the importance of telling the truth to people irrespective mm -hmm. of their health status. Then there are three competing principles against that one. One is tikva, hope. A, th a second one is tiruf hadahat, which means to rip asunder one's knowledge. And the third one is vidui, which is the last prayer that Jews say upon their deathbed. And how Jewish bioethicists play out these competing principles then leads them, on the whole, to say, frankly, you ought not disclose the truth to this dying patient. Let's call her Nancy. Uh, but you should rather withhold that information from her. Yeah. So how, how um, do those tensions of those three different principles um, interact? Um, how, would, how would one decipher between those three, and, 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 and how in particular might you? So let's take tikva, yeah. hope, for example. Uh, so the way some bioethicists argue on that uh, principle is that one ought not do anything to remove hope from a dying patient or for a patient who's not dying. Uh -huh. Just don't remove hope. Mm -hmm. Always maintain a sense of hopefulness for a patient. Then that gets into the into tension with the medical realities, that there are certain cir circumstances where patients have transcended beyond the capacities of medicine to attend to their needs. Uh, and so th that puts the, the healthcare provider or a family member in a very awkward position mm -hmm. where the reality of medicine is not going to cure them, it may only be able to care for them. And then there's this principle of not removing hope but they've got the competing principle of the truth. So that's how hope often leads people to at least withhold information, but not necessarily to lie. Take something like tirufa da'at, to rip asunder somebody's knowledge. This also has uh, biblical and uh, rabbinic roots that uh, we should not tell somebody uh, something that will rip their conscience mm -hmm. and they become so distraught that from that distress they then deteriorate even faster. Mm -hmm. And so that leads many contemporary bioethicists to say that regardless of their 
um, their medical condition, yeah. we ought not hasten their demise mm-hmm. by telling them something that they will become. I remember some scared. famous story, I think it was the Lubavitcher Rebbe who lied to, uh, I believe it was his mother for years, that her his brother, her son, had died. I think that was the case. Mm-hmm. For years, he actually wrote le- fake letters from him wow. on, her, on his behalf or something like this. Uh, forgive me if I got that story wrong, but he definitely wrote fake letters uh, on behalf of, uh, or maybe it was for his wife. Anyways, I'm sorry. I will post below the, the actual case. But that's an interesting yes. situation where he's trying to protect yeah. the audience's right. um, uh, conscience yeah. because the information would be so distressing right. Right. Uh, that it would deteriorate her condition uh, all the faster. And the third uh, principle of uh, vidui, the, the principle of the final confession, leads some uh, bioethicists to say that you ought not say anything to compromise the efficacy and the sincerity of that final confession. Mm -hmm. And that leads some bioethicists to say you should outright lie Mm -hmm. so that to to maintain that ritual purity of the patient in their dying moments. Wow, wow. So is this something that folks might consider uh, putting in their healthcare proxy, basically putting their end of life wishes in terms of requests they have? Mm. Is this something that family members and medical professionals should decide for themselves or should one in, in a different state of mind have requests in advance for this? I think it's really important yeah. for family members to have a preliminary right. conversation, yeah. absolutely, right. to say I do or do not want to have right. the full truth disclosed to me right. no matter what my condition is. Yeah. Um, or to say, I need to have my hope maintained irrespective of the veracity right. of the medical right. situation. At what point do you think one loses their rights um, towards truth? Um, if one is an autonomous, living, autonomous, moral agent, capable of making decisions, even if there's a lot of pain involved, do they have a right to receiving truth? I think that every person who is has capacity yeah. certainly has the right to receive the, the full truth, full information about their condition so that right. they can make the best decisions for them. Yeah. Where it gets problematic is when people slowly lose their um, sanity. Right. And where is that threshold between right. sanity and senility? Uh, and uh, who should be the healthcare proxy in that circumstance? How much truth should be told to somebody who can't fully fathom what they're being told? Right, right. Now, I don't know how much you engage in comparative religious thought or uh, even other um, non-Jewish philosophies on this issue, but what else can be contributed outside the Jewish framework to this conversation? So I think that there's a lot of conversation in secular chaplaincy yeah. about hope mm-hmm. and hopefulness. Okay. Okay. Uh, and that I think that there's a lot there that Judaism can learn about uh, what hope can look like and how to operationalize it from within a Judaic ritual and right. sort of philosophical or theological milieu. Yeah, okay. So my last question, I think, is that is that I think I would tend to take a pluralistic approach to these various ethics at play and in any particular case, apply what seems to be reasonable in that, in, that, in, that, in that unique situation. But as a general rule, given these conflicting values, what would you generally um, advise or indicate as the sort of dominant thrust of, of the Jewish position here? Well, this is where I, perhaps I uh, disagree with uh-huh. my other uh, contemporary Jewish bioethicists. Yeah. I, I like what... Um, I, I like the principle of truth telling. Yeah. I think there's something right. um, honest about it. Yeah. There's a, a moment of integrity mm-hmm. in telling the truth, even if it's a difficult truth to be told and right. one that might be very difficult to hear and receive. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's why I think that Immanuel Kant has something important for us to, to understand, mm-hmm. is that truth telling is an overarching principle. We have to learn how to do it tactfully. There are going to be certain circumstances where we ought not tell the truth. Uh, but uh, I think at least in the biomedical situation with patients whose demise is coming quickly, uh, there, it, there are going to be very rare occasions where telling the truth is not the appropriate yeah. action. Yeah, okay, very helpful, very insightful. And I think we'll see a lot of family conflict towards the end when there's different views on how that person should be talked to. I've seen that quite a bit in my own rabbinate. Very insightful. Check out Professor Crane's writings, articles, books on this issue and many others. Thanks so much.